The periodic table is this amazing thing. It shows you how all the elements relate to each other. Exploring that and finding out how many of them there are in a mobile phone is, is a truly interesting task. A lot of what we do here is the characterization and measurement of a whole range of materials. Like this machine here is an X-ray fluorescence machine that uses high-intensity X-rays to bombard a sample. And by measuring those X-rays, the amount of them and the wavelength of them, we can identify what materials were in the sample. With something like a mobile phone, we'd have to take it and crush it. Something else we can do is use a tungsten carbide mill. And that crushes all the circuit boards and all the components off the circuit board. So this is a, a lump of tungsten carbide, which is about nearly twice as heavy as steel. We're going to pop the materials in there. Throw that in there, and we'll put a lid on. See, this is just a, a big metal food blender. And in shaking it, it makes the heavy tungsten carbide weight vibrate back and forth, and that, in essence, pulverizes anything that gets in its way. All the components that were on there and now have been, been shattered off and are in that grey goo. We've made the powder using the crushing methods uh, we saw earlier. Now what we need to do is actually, ironically, we need to put that back together again and consolidate it. And all we've got here is a large press with a small space here in which we put the powder in an aluminium can, put the lid on, and then we'll apply. applies about 50 tonnes of pressure to that small um, aluminium can with the powder in it. And just the pressure alone makes it stick together. And then we have a nice solid consolidated powder ready for analysis. What is in essence a, a small grey powder press disc. Then we can insert that in the machine and then we can do the measurements. What, what has changed over the years, and actually the most noticeable thing that's changed is the lead, or the lack of lead. So 10 years ago, I think maybe a bit more, the, the lead, lead was banned and lead solder was all basically lead containing. If you analyse an old phone like this, you get lots of lead. Now you don't get any. There are only really 90 or so useful elements in the periodic table that we can access and use in everyday life. And what we find is about 40 or so of those are actually found in a typical mobile phone and its electronics. When we looked at some of our older paper-based periodic tables that we have here in the lab, we found things like ytterbium listed as little more than a scientific laboratory curiosity. So back then, and that was 1987, we saw the Royal Society of Chemistry basically saying that this material was of no known use. And then in the time since then, we found that actually it's become a very useful material for lasers and electronics, and we're discovering it when we're analysing our mobile phones. That's how our life moves on and how quickly, and also it's quite interesting to keep these things to give you that perspective. So this technique, X-ray diffraction, is what we use when we try and identify what the compounds are, the crystalline compounds are, in a material. And in this instance, we've been looking at a blended iPhone, which we put in a food blender, so we made it nice and homogeneous and all crushed up. Talk about 40 elements, out of the periodic table being in there, but of course many of those are combined together in many different ways. So the number of chemicals in a mobile phone is in the hundreds, and the number of components in there are highly complex components, many of which each consist of three or four different chemical elements and compounds. So it's a very, very complex piece of electronics that most people just don't recognize the complexity of that chemistry.